Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time for the WTWC World Thumb Wrestling Championship! Sponsored by the Impact Plus app. Hello, folks! Uh, I'm the WWE Head of Creative Triple H. Uh, you know, sometimes I get tired of looking for ideas to come out of this massive head that isn't let's steal everything from all of wrestling's coffers, especially if they're my guys that my father-in-law decided, oh, I'm going to be stupid and let them go. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but when I run out of ideas... There's only one app I trust to get those ideas mowing and flowing again, and that is the Impact Plus app. And now, here are the Impact Plus app singers. Get the Impact Plus app, get the Impact Plus app, get the Impact Plus app. That was just you. You're terrible and you should feel bad. But not as bad as these two fearless competitors. Standing at six foot two and weighing two hundred and forty seven pounds. That's two hundred and forty nine. I just finished a hoagie. Professor Phil Woods. Yes, it is I, Professor Phil Woods, and I am here to take the World Thumb Wrestling Championship back to the land of Gokai Studios and Paranormal Patrollers. Hand standing at five foot ten, weighing a paltry, skinny, one hundred and forty two pounds of pure bone and flab. You better watch yourself, kid. The one, the only, Mr. J, the Joker. It's Joker time, bitches. <laughs> Okay, Mr. J, now remember, take your glove off, just... I know how thumb wrestling works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the rules are simple. Professor Phil Woods and the Joker are going to sit down at the chairs, put their thumbs up against each other, and rub them until they can't rub them anymore. Bobby, have you ever seen thumb wrestling, uh... No. Crap. Just crap. You're absolute crap. No wonder that Ryan Pastry I hates you so much. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's how this is going to go. Phil's going to put his thumb up. Joker's going to put his thumb up. They're going to fight to the death of all deaths. The thumb of all thumbs to figure out just who is the greatest thumb wrestling champ of all time. Once the bell rings, gentlemen, it's on. No rules, no disqualification, no worries, <laughs> except for decapitation. I'll set him up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Of course I'm ready. <laughs> ready. Wrestle. Down. <laughs> And those two are hugging like nobody's business. Their thumbs, Bobby. Right. Uh, uh, it looks like Phil Woods is getting the advantage over Mr. J. Ah, follow the comic. What does a comic have to do with any of this? It has everything to do with everything. Ah, no. I've been in a comic book for 80 plus years, kid. You got nothing on me. Ah! Ah! Mr. J is mounting a surprising comeback, but can Phil Woods prevail? Ah! Ah! Uh, 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 trick thumb, trick thumb. And Mr. J calls for time out. The tension here is palpable as Harley is trying to massage Mr. J's thumb back to health. The doctors say, Bobby, that it is a strained thumb, the likes of which only a true warrior could come back from. Okay, Puddin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put your thumb in my mouth and suck on it for a little while. Hopefully it takes the poison away. 
Oh, please, please, please. I, I'm not some sort of baby needing a stamp sucked. I, oh, 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 I'm wrong. I could be very, very wrong. Ah, uh, hello. Mr. Thumb is getting bored. Watch. Hey, hey, Mr. Thumb, what do you think of Kenny Omega? <sighs> See, look, he almost surrendered. That's how badly it is. <laughs> All right, are we done with the timeout? Just a second. Okay, you ready, Puddin? Ready, of course I'm ready. <laughs> After that, I feel like I can do anything. No, you. Yes, me. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Oh no. Oh my god, it's a pin attempt! A pin attempt! One, two, three! The winner is. I am the new world thumb wrestling champion, uh, the man's and all men, the scientist of the paranormal, Professor Phil Woods! Yes! Oh my god, okay, I would like to thank uh, Mummy and Daddy, uh, my beautiful daughter Emily, uh, the cast of Paranormal Patrollers, um, of course, Michael Fraser, my creator, and the person who uh, inspires me to be my best, Evelyde, me, and my wonderful, wonderful automaton Reginald, whose proceeds will be donated to charity. So that I may fix my poor little friend who made the ultimate sacrifice to save me. <laughs> I need to go call my daughter. And that was the end of the World Thumb Wrestling Championships. We now return to you to your originally scheduled program. Oh, my name is Vincent K. McMahon, and welcome to Body Slams and Drop Kicks. Our first bit of news, Ruby the Floozy Wright is finally injured. This is the happiest day I have had since I found out that I, Vincent K. McMahon, beat Ted Jenner. I am one step closer to gaining all of Michael Fraser's love for myself. I think you're gonna fight Jesse for that one. I said I'm one step closer. <laughs> this is the part where, where you know you professionally segue, you call who, out who your other co hosts are. I'm kind of uncomfortable in this situation. There's like stiff things coming near me, and it's making me uncomfortable. You what? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, why don't you move a little bit over to your right there? I think I see what you're talking about. It's a hatchet, ladies and gentlemen. A hatchet. Oh, and some sort of weird little razor thing. Also, my grapefruit and false swing. I'm joined by my other co-host, the man of a thousand and four voices, Mr. Nathan Tasker. Man, it is a pleasure to be here, man. My name's Kenny. I am also joined by the man who, earlier today, we had his intervention for his love affair with Adam Sandler and Kate Bosworth. We're still trying to get through to him, so you caught us an odd time, Mr. Dean Conley. One podcast, mate. I think you should have said was I was the uh, intervention. I did. We we, we that you required an intervention because of your love for Kenneth Omega was blinding you to the fact that he is not really that good. Oh, that's me. I'm not that good. I kind of suck. Do you suck more than Shawn Michaels does? Oh my God, Shawn Michaels is the greatest of all time. Man, to I mean, even yes, have then. me in the same sentence as Shawn Michaels just is way more qualified than I ever could be. So my God, I suck. I suck so much. I suck worse than The Undertaker, man. So do you suck Shawn Michaels? Of course, if I could. But he's way out of my league. He's never been in a Waffle House in his life. He comes to the International House of Pancakes 
You can't compete with that. It's international. Oh, my God. <laughs> Actually, Fraser, there is more more important question. How much did our co-host enjoy Shawn Michaels being on NXT this week? Our co-host <laughs> right now, you, you can't see it. His I, one uh, arm is way bigger than the other. I, 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 there is a reason why I've got my degeneration extra on. <laughs> to see Shawn Michaels on TV is the, uh, is the pinnacle of wrestling. <laughs> Shawn is so great! <laughs> We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We we you know we we see his presence. You know, Dean goes, "Oh, there's the person who who you know who is more talented than the Undertaker ever could be." I'm going to pretend to hate him. And Fraser goes, "What the heck? You're not Kenny Noballs." And then I go ah! 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 at the top of my lungs, and you know, I probably just wake woken everybody up in my house and. You made Jesse choke on her Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Is she still and, alive? And what did we learn today? Don't have Starbucks during Michael Fraser's podcast. It goes up your nose and then you just hate it. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't Denny's though. Can you imagine her choking up a moon over my hammy? So with the news. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Is- yeah, you know, you know what, you know what. Now I'm just going to screw with Jesse the entire podcast. So, <laughs> I, I, I just want everybody to know that up front. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 <clears> okay. <throat> okay. Rhea Ripley. How much does she suck? <laughs> See. <laughs> okay, actually, that's a good idea. Go to self. Get Ray Ripley to show up in British Columbia. Take out the competition, then take Fraser to a reasonably priced restaurant where I, Vincent Katie McMahon, can do some things that I can't say because children could run into the room at any time, and Michael Fraser, my little sweetie, but can say, "Oh, it's a children's show." Um, actually, since Mrs. Fraser is here, Nathan, I think we can ask that question we've been trying to ask her for the last couple of months. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Fraser, you know how me and Nathan love you more than your husband loves you, Nathan. I know. Yes. <laughs> well, we are actually planning a WWE 2K22 MyGM mode where if Fraser has Rhea Ripley, he has to take her either Raw Women, either Raw SmackDown, NXT, or NXT. Whatever UK brand he controls. Yeah, whatever brand he controls. If for whatever reason she loses the title, he must spend a week on the couch. Does that sound fair? <laughs> Why can't I sleep on the couch? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, you know, what, what's more comfortable, the bed with Fraser or the couch? The couch. <laughs> oh, the couch is more comfortable. Oh, oh God, okay. Yeah, so we will amend the rules. Comfortable. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We'll we'll go with that. So, so if that happens, Mister Fraser will have the bed. <laughs> so, Mister Fra- Mrs. Fraser will take the uh, couch. Mister Fraser will have the bed. But just make sure all the uh, animals and the kids are with Mr. Fraser. Yep. Absolutely. That's what happens when I'm in the bed. Well, you're going to be in the bed a hell of a lot, buddy. Did, 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 did we ever tell you? That, did, sorry, sorry. Did I ever tell you that I put Ray Ripley on your starting roster? So, I mean, you know, <laughs> think about if she ever loses that championship. Yeah, he literally stacked. She Nathan literally stacked the deck in your favor. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't until he gave me the hurricane. I am secure now. That yeah, I have yes, hurricane. but but I had to give you. But yeah, I, I saw Rhea Ripley that was available in the pre-draft, and I, I gave you Rhea Ripley too, bud. So yeah, you got to make sure that she's women's champion. Yeah, I have somewhat of a plan. Other otherwise, stuff. otherwise, hey kids, it's bedtime with daddy. 
Yeah. <laughs> it always that. Spend so time with daddy. It makes our dreams come true. Daddy gets a break. Mommy gets a break. Gets a break. Yeah. But who cares? It's daddy's here. Daddy, read me a story about Kenny No Balls. Okay, son. Kenny No Balls is the greatest. No, no. The one where he sucks. <sighs> Kenny went to a Waffle House for the 50th time that week, where he met his beautiful waitress slash girlfriend, Yolanda. Yolanda, why do I suck so much? I don't know, Joel. <laughs> so I'll get on with the news. The oh, now before. you're getting on with the news. I I need Kenny to have was, his usual uh, time on this podcast. Because <laughs> I'm uh, not going to be having time on AEW for quite a while. And it's not for the reason you were thinking. It's because, oh my God, do I suck. You don't put that evil on me. <laughs> the latest for Cody Rhodes for discovery from a torn pectoral muscle. As previously noted, Cody Rhodes had surgery to repair a torn pectoral muscle during the June time 22 edition of WWE SmackDown. Like Cole said, the Rhodes could be out of action for up to nine months. Was speaking to TMZ.com. Corey provided an update on his recovery, how WWE has been treating him. No complaints. They treated me like the house that built me, which they were. And honestly, it was amazing. We were back and everything was rolling so fast. And then I tore my pack. It was like the best three months of my life. Hopefully get back to that soon. I was told I had the strength of an 11-year-old, but I was pretty strong at 11. Hopefully soon. I got in mind where I want to be. And I think a lot of fans have in their mind where I'd like to be. And that's hopefully where it's at. Right now, I do actually agree with what's going on because I think what happens next, hopefully, and what we do, and this is all speculative up in the air. Hopefully, it's a run that people remember, and I got to be healthy for a quote courtesy WrestleNews.co. So, first of all, strength of an 11 year old. He, he has it right now. Okay. So, if he were to come back right now, he'd be as good as Kenny Noballs. <laughs> There's a saying regarding Cody Rhodes that you always say. You know, there is, but after his performance at uh, Hell in a Cell, I, 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 can't, I can't just go and say, Team Raw, millions of dollars worth of talent, and Cody Rhodes. <laughs> uh, actually, that can be changed to, and an injured Cody Rhodes. Oh, and an injured Cody Rhodes. <laughs> well, it's funny, Kurt goes on how he won a gold medal off a broken neck, but, you know, Cody Rhodes won a match with a broken back. <laughs> Okay, so so why are you trying to turn Cody Rhodes, you know, one of the most likable people in the WWE right now, into Kurt Angle 2.0? Because that could I got happen. Some, I got some Kurt Angle news for you. That's why Kurt Angle defends his decision to talk about Chris Benoit during podcasts. During his podcast, Kurt Angle discussed his 2022 WWE Unforgiven pay review match against Chris Benoit. Angle said the following about his decision to talk about Benoit. Oh, by the way, I did want to say this. I know that people don't really care about me talking about Chris Benoit, but I'm not doing it for Chris Benoit. If I race Benoit, I'm going to race most of my career. I'm not going to race myself. So a lot of people might not agree with me having this show today talking about Chris and everything. I don't condone what he did outside the ring, but what he did in the ring was phenomenal, and I love the guy for that. Top two, actually, no, number one. He's definitely number one. I put him over everybody as far as in the ring wrestling. Not overall entertainer, but in the ring, he was the best. Chris was seven, the most intense wrestler I've ever been in the ring with, bar none, but I was pretty intense as well, and that's the one thing that I liked about Chris was that he matched my intensity. I never wrestled with another person ever in my life since Chris Benoit that ever matched the intensity he had. That guy was so tough, so strong, so intense, so good. It's hard to believe that a human being could be that good. Quote, courtesy of So, uh, Chris Benoit, um, it's it's one of those things. It's a really touchy subject for me because what he's right. What Chris did outside of the ring is absolutely deplorable, like legit, super deplorable. Um, and what um, you know, you can't condone that. There's a reason that he's been blacklisted by the WWE. Yeah. It's a blacklisting. I totally support. Um, I would as much as I would like to see WrestleMania 20. In its entirety, which I think I can on the network, I'm not sure. Um, it's not worth giving a legacy to Chris Benoit. In this case, as much as I know it's it's controversial, um, it's basically Kurt giving props to his friend. 
for being as intense as he is. I don't think he should have done it in public forum. But I also don't think he should be really vilified for it. Uh, Kurt has done a lot worse than this. Mm. Yeah, we've seen, it, especially on his live show and the stuff that he did with Karen and everything. Yeah, yeah. Now, those yeah. things are what he should be vilified for. I will say one thing, Chaps, before we move on. I, I'm a big, I was a big fan of Chris Benoit, the wrestler. Yeah. Obviously, you can't really say you were a fan of Chris Benoit, the person, because nobody ever knew what he was like as a ring. Do I do I miss him as a wrestler? Yes. Do I miss him as a person? No. Was I shocked when what happened happened? Yes. Does nobody really talk about him anymore? No. And why does nobody talk about him? There's a specific reason why nobody talks about him anymore. Yeah. One, one he's not here, and two, like Nathan said, what he did shouldn't really be brought up in conversation. Oh, by the way, kids, if you want to know what he did, don't ask your mum and dad. Yeah, please don't ask. And there's a dark side of the ring episode. Oh, you could watch that. Anyway, move it on before this has too much attention on it. A uh, former WCW star wrestler says MGS Big Swallow said he constantly uses cheap heat during Conan's keeping at 100 podcasts. Former WCW wrestler Disco Inferno comment on MGS character since we're turning. Wait, 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 hang on. Disco uh, Inferno? Uh, yep. Disco, Disco, Disco Inferno wants to Disco talk about Inferno. using cheap heat. Yeah. Um, cut print, oh, cut yeah. print dead. Regardless of whether or not I want to talk about AEW and I don't, MJF is better than you. Period. Done. Yeah, great. Um, I don't really think there's anything that's been left said on that subject. Glenn Gilberti basically is not Disco Inferno anymore. And you'd be credible with a name like Glenn Gilberti anyway. That's almost like using that's almost taking Billy Gunn and using Monty Sop as his ring name. FYI, that is Billy Gunn's real name, actually. So, yeah. Mm. What, what sounds better, Billy Gunn or Monty Sop? But yes, anyway, Fraser, move it on. Devon Dudley addresses rumors of there being heat between him and Baldy Ray during an episode of the Cut Pro Wrestling Podcast in 2021. Devon Dudley told the story of how him and a former tag team partner, Bully Ray, a.k.a. Bully Ray Dudley, stopped doing business together during the interview with the a to the K wrestling show, Devon Rush Rumors, there being heat between him and Bully Ray. Actually, we just spoke yesterday about another autograph sign we were going to do together. A lot of people thought that me and Bubba were at odds, and we weren't at odds. It was just that him and I needed a break. He and I were together for 20 years. I saw him more than I saw my first two wives, which wasn't a bad idea. Trust me. Sometimes you just need a break, and that's what we did. We took a break, and now we're reunited again. Quote courtesy of Wrestling News. Co. Nothing to say. No, no, just move it on. You move it on, please. You need a break from things every once in a while. You, Vince McMahon you allegedly said that he's. The producer will probably kill me for saying this, but you even need a break from your other half for a bit. Whether it be like just going out for a couple of hours or anything else worse than that, but everybody needs a break from everything. Yeah, and they were a great team, and. They accomplished a whole lot. So, and they even opened wrestling school. They trained Jesse Neal. So, like the time away from the two of them after all that makes sense. Oh, by the way, Fridge, I'm glad you brought up Devon Dudley. Is there any news about his sons? Mm-hmm. I actually haven't had anything pop up recently. You see, I, you see, I've had a rumor that I read earlier today. I think it was. That uh, Devon's sons are not actually in AEW anymore, and rumor is they may be uh, Triple H bound in NXT. Oh, so come on, then, come on, then, Hunter. You you, sh- you might have a Hall of Fame's uh, twin bo- uh, brothers. Oh. To How does that make you feel? Well, it, it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be the first time I've had the offspring of a Hall of Famer in the WWE. Now, whether or not they'll do more than Charlotte, I don't know. But hey, it, you know, if they are ready, willing, able, and passionate, man, we'll take anybody. Okay? Sean can take chicken crap and turn it into chicken salad. 
I believe in Shawn Michaels. I believe in uh, his talent, his dedication, uh, you know, and uh, I don't mind saying this. Uh, without him, I'd be nothing. I would be absolutely nothing. I'd be worse than a bug under a brick. So if there's anyone that can take, uh, you know, Devon Dudley's sons and turn them into superstars, it's going to be the heartbreak kid. So I got no issue with this, you know, bring him on. Bad news. Uh, Vince McMahon allegedly said that EC3 can't talk with much enthusiasm. Ah! Yeah, Yeah. Yep, shooting from the hip podcast. Yeah, see, see. that's me. Comment on working with this man in WWE. It's me. I swear this is the truth. You saw one promo I did. It wasn't even like one of our professional shoots. It was me by the pool. And I think I was going like victory after victory. It was kind of goofy and over the top. Like you don't have any common sense. He then saw it once and he was like, no, this guy needs to be a weatherman. He can't talk with much enthusiasm. Actually, he shouldn't even talk. Nobody even said, hey, Vince, he's actually a decent enough speaker. He might be good there with a microphone, produce something with that. Nobody even bothered to say anything. EC3 was called up WWE's main roster in early 2019, only to be released on April 15, 2020. That's called making a bad first impression. It's like what Dean Connolly does all the time. I mean... Think about it. I, Vincent K. McMahon, made a great impression on Michael Fraser. That's why he keeps on bringing me back. Dean made a terrible impression on me. And now he's going to be making a wrestling movie with John Cena. You heard it here first, folks. You can't see him. Dean, tell us a little bit more about your wrestling movie with Sean Cena. Uh, I can I can definitely not confirm that this is happening, but I can happily deny everything because I would rather... Let's just see. Who do I hate more than John Cena, aside from the usual? Hmm... Mm. I would rather be selling Skarsgård's character from June and just literally bathe in a load of a load of mud and oil for however many uh, hours it is than star in a movie with John Cena. John Cena has no charisma. Every, his entire scenes in Fast 9 literally look like he's been slapped by his older brother. So he's just like, I hate you. I really hate you. I'm just going to do everything, because I, everything against you because I hate you so much. Did the guy even smile in Fast Nine? No. I just remember that bet. one scene where in the trailer was where he walks up to the guy and he says something and he's got like that mean mugging face. That's all I kind of remember from the trailer when he's first joined. Now, if I was going to do a wrestling movie, I would rather do it with Shawn Michaels. Who wouldn't say? Uh, the producer wouldn't. The man can act. The man can... Dance, and I don't know if he told you this lately, but he sings his own theme song. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Hunter, what would you say to a... Uh, uh, actually, how old would we describe a producer as in her relationship to John Cena? I would say on... I would say on borderline, not so much obsession, but she's one of those people who basically take everything that should be the norm. So let's say when we say the greatest wrestler of all time... I would say Taker, Nathan would say Sean, she would say John Cena, which is just not true. No, it, it absolutely is not true. Uh, who? What else does she think? Oh, yeah, she thinks uh, John Cena is better than, well, mind you, has she ever said that uh, John Cena is better than Kenny Nobles? But to be fair, anyone's better than Kenny Nobles. Uh, I, I happen to know for a fact that John Cena is better than Mike. So I really don't need any sort of producer in her telling me what way to go about being the worst of the worst. I only have one fan right now, man. The Young Bucks, they stopped talking to me. And Yolanda's been giving me the cold shoulder, man. But my one fan, he's never left my side. He's right there. Michael Fraser. (laughs) Is that a dog? 
Uh, yeah, of course it is. It's my Labradoodle. I call him Fraser. I mean, uh, I call him Splot. Actually, gentlemen, this gives me an idea. Since the since the producer literally look, thinks John Cena is the best thing since the last bread, I think it's time we quiz the producer on John Cena's wrestling career. Well, like, if we, you know who he hasn't gone up against, uh, Nate, Nathan knows this one wrestler quite well. Like, there were, there's this amazing video out there if you can find it. it, it who were they wrestling? A, a, a Trevor Bentley. And, and the person's talents were so amazing that, like, it, it left Nathan clearly speechless and description of their skills. Nathan, do you, do you remember who that wrestler was? Uh, you know, I, I don't, but uh, but between you and me, I, I, I feel like a, a sack is coming to mind. Now, this here's Gladys. She's my oldest sack of flour. And she can wrestle circles around John Cena, I tell you what. <laughs> Uh, well, I think with Jesus should have a John Cena quiz and see how well she does. Well, I, I, yeah, I got, I got no issue with, uh, you know, you making it just as long as you put uh, who beat John Cena at uh, Raw in London in April two thousand seven. I don't have a problem with that. It's like who decimated John Cena in two minutes at WrestleMania. Uh, which WrestleMania yeah. was it? My mind's got a bit. I can, I can tell you that it was WrestleMania thirty four. I just want to go in and get the exact time. Thank you. Um, so, so this uh, this supreme decimation of John Cena, which I, I I gotta be I gotta be honest with you, you know, if you're not a huge fan of this wrestler, uh, watching him decimate John Cena will make you a fan of it. It was the best he looked in years, um, and it's not because of John Cena. John, John Cena is just terrible, but uh, the certain wrestler, Dean, which. I know you know the name of beat John Cena in uh, two minutes and 45 seconds. Wow. That still doesn't beat the record set by Legion of Doom. And then set by uh, Kane, by the way. And then set by Sheamus. You know, I've... but but if you, if you put those two in the ring together right now, oh. maybe it could. Actually, gentlemen, that's an idea. Why don't we make the producer a John Cena Christmas uh, quiz? Comprising all his greatest hits of both his wrestling and his movie career. And what hits are those? I know he doesn't have a more successful career than me. But really, I don't know of any hits. Well, she would. Anyway, can we start talking about one of the worst wrestlers ever to become a 16-time world champion? Fraser, move it on. Ric Flair? No, we have a 16-time world champion. Uh, uh, Rick Shea comments on what he expects to see change in Triple H's WWE during an interview of NBC Sports Boston. Rick Shea talked about the creative changes being made in WWE under the Triple H regime. I think the presentation of championships have always been important to me. From 92 to 99, it was all about the championships. You know what I mean? I think there will probably be more light on those, which will help viewers watch it a little better and understand better. It's going to be a great product that's going to be put out there. I think everyone's in a new creative sphere and trying to think of new things, so it's crazy everyone talk and think about new things. Maybe it's just because everything is new and everything is changing, but I think the presentation is still going to be WWE spectacle. This is a presentation, but I think it's really going to put some more focus on the championships and being a championship-driven like story. Whatever the stories are, we'll look, lean more towards that rather than the cartoony character aspect of the quote courtesy of Skylar Russell. Mm. So the question is, if that is the way of thinking, if that's how he thinks about nine, between 92 and 99, does that mean the Intercontinental title is still prestigious? You know, it really depends on, I guess, how I treat it. I mean, really, it can't be any worse than how my dear old father-in-law treated it. Isn't that right, uh, Fraser? I mean, spot. Uh... Yes. Our farf, yes. What? Spot, you can talk! Oh, oh my. Far, far, far. <laughs> oh my god, and you sound just like Are we, in a, are we in a different version of League of Super Pets? So, uh, Fraser is uh, Vince McMahon's uh, most favorite pet, favorite pet. Hunter Sean's turtle, so. 
damn right. And I will have you know, I am the slowest and the last person to get anything in a conversation. Uh, and you're seeing us rob it, Dean. Oh my god, Spot can talk! Uh, I think you'll find the producer is seen as Rabbit. I myself am simply uh, a crow to the Undertaker. Drew McIntyre just took emotional damage. I do like Drew, don't get me wrong, I do like him. Unfortunately, his reputation has been flattered by the fake head of the table because we have the true head of the table here on Body Slams and Drop Kicks. We have the woman who would happily give Roman Reigns a finger if it meant that he could actually get over. Yes, you just... You, Jess has literally been saying her this whole time. <laughs> yeah, Jess is the true head of the table, so Roman Reigns can go himself. And moving on, news regarding the botched fireball spot with Drew McIntyre from WWE SmackDown. Seen during the summer 23rd, 2022 edition of SmackDown, Scarlett shot a fireball at Drew McIntyre, but it didn't come close to connecting with his face. Scarlet then hit McIntyre with a low blow. Karen Cross applied the cross jack smash McIntyre corner the fight full slide. Cross was told to keep going after the botched fireball, and the segment had to be improvised. Fightful noted the following were told that very clearly the flash paper was not ready for live TV and didn't work at a moment where it needed to catch enough of someone's space to sell. Furthermore, the flash paper was actually brought with the team that took the company jet to SmackDown and wasn't picked up locally or brought with the prop team. Well, I see the, I see the uh, visual effects department at WWE still ship. I think, I think we should get the dear old game to give him a bit of an upgrade. So I see, and that's the other thing. I see that WWE's uh, visual effects department sucks. And you can't have that happen during live shows. It's like what happened with Warrior and Hogan. Yeah, well, f- first rule is... Well, my first rule would be always guarantee success with live TV. Don't guarantee something that might go wrong like it did. But I will say one thing about Drew. He still sold it. Yeah. Despite what True happened. Man. Yeah, but Drew's a professional. He'll, he tries to make it work with whatever they give him. Remember, the three-man band, he was selling it. Oh, like, God. It was legit, so. <laughs> I'll have you know I love the three-man band. I wish I'd brought it back. You mean after Jinder Mahal tarnished the WWE title? It was, I, I I will have you know, the three-man band was Jinder Mahal's most compelling time as a face, okay? He was loved in the three-man band. <laughs> Mostly by me, but, but, dude, how do you not love the three-man band? I was, they, actually, I was actually off WWE, watching WWE when that happened. I was well and truly in TNA's house. I think only two of them. Oh, I love the theme song. I'm sorry. Uh, Bobby Fish made his debut at Impact Wrestling's Victory Road. And then they play the stupid um, air guitars on their way out. It's like they think they're people. That gimmick was too good. Like, it was so ridiculous, though, that it was amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I said Slater got himself a band and, you know, was a singer. And I wish they had a released an album, though. Like, that's that's a, that's a one thing I enjoyed. Uh, same with I Am a Sucker for the uh, Jillian Hall gimmick. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody's ever heard of a jingle with Jillian. Oh, no, please, God, no. But it is the best Christmas album that you could ever hear. Uh, Nathan, <laughs> say that with a straight face and everyone will believe you. <clears throat> Sorry. If you want to hear a good Christmas album, a jingle with Jillian. It is the best Christmas album you will ever hear, bar none. I love the way he actually said that like he meant it. <laughs> Anybody with taste would avoid that like the plague. Okay, if you have to listen to one, at least listen to Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. It is is fantastic. It is fantastic. I am am trying to imagine that song being gutted, butchered, (laughs) roasted. Oh, you don't have to imagine it, Dean. Don't worry, I got your back on this. Praise the God with the news. I got your back. Oh, God, please no. Please no. (laughs) 
I'll tell you what, actually, that's an idea. Can you send the producer that, Chris, that Christmas uh, album and see what she says? Well, I, I'll, I'm, I'll, st- I'll start with sending you this. I'll start with sending you this. Uh, I'll put it in the group chat, buddy. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll look at it and make some films on try to a minute. Anyway, continue, Monsieur Fouiza. Uh Bobby Fish made his debut at Impact Wrestling Victory Road, and apparently there's been a claim made that Bobby Fish tried to get Adam Cole and Kyle Riley to leave AEW. To be noted, Bobby Fish is probably done with AEW following the expiration of his short-term contract on August 31st, 2022. A thread was started on F4WOnline.com's message board for members only. Guards to WWE allegedly reaching out to wrestlers under contract to AEW. Ryan Frederick, who covers UFC events for the F4W Online site, Wrote the following in regard to Adam Cole and Kyle Ray. I posted it in the Bobby Fish thread, but I know Fish was trying to get them to Cole and Kyle to ask for the releases to go back to me, and they both told him no. It's possible Cole may have clued Tony Khan in. If he did, I doubt he was the only one. I'm sure Sir Strickland was one of them who did so. Bobby Fish ended up becoming a trending copy on Twitter with fans. Assessing the claims, posting means AEW president recently stated that Cole's AEW contract doesn't expire until 2027. Jesus. All I'm going to say is uh, good luck on to getting uh, Adam Cole, unless you can get him sent out of it. I'm pretty I'm, sure him and Brooke Baker are a package deal. So. I, okay, so I'm going to be honest. I completely missed the article. I found a jingle with Jillian online on YouTube. Search it up. I heard the name Adam Cole. He can't go back for a couple of years. He's too valuable to AEW. They're not going to let him out. And more importantly, as Fraser said, He's a package deal, okay? It's like having Jess without Fraser. Uh, Fraser just latches onto that thing, and, uh, you know, you can't stop him. So it's like Fraser is basically the Adam Cole of the relationship. You know, you got Britt Baker, who is successful in doing everything, and then there's Adam Cole going, I came to AEW for you, and I'm doing nothing. I suck, Britt Baker. Yes. Yes, you do. Britt Baker is one of the pillars of AEW. I don't even think Adam Cole will be a pillar. Jess, nothing. You got nothing to say? I I missed that. What did she say? She didn't hear. She didn't hear. Oh. Well, Nathan's not going to want this last bit of news. Is it Shawn no, Michaels? No. He doesn't want to hear about Shawn Michaels. Oh, no. That's what you you you're lying. Why do you lie, Fraser? Look at him. Look, look how uninterested he is. Shut He's up. Not even bothered. Give me the money. Give me the news. He's lying. All of you people know he's lying. He's lying. He's lying. Why do you lie to the people? God, talk about obsessed. Yeah. Sean Michaels explains. All right, hang up. Go ahead. Uh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Is it Sean Michaels explains how much he dislikes Nathan? That's no. wrong. Is it Sean? Is it Sean uh, views Nathan's uh, mock Nathan's love of Triple H mocking as unprofessional and unworthy? No. Sean Michaels explains. And you're supposed sorry. to keep going. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Sean Michaels explains why he will never come on this podcast because Nathan frightens him. It's a lie. Sean <laughs> <Stop laughs> Michaels explains. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> come on, right, anything you got to my- say, you can say to the shots. <laughs> Shawn Michaels explains the origin of the Degeneration X crotch chop. In an interview with NFI Books to contra- promote the 20th anniversary of Degeneration X, Shawn Michaels discussed the origin of the crotch chop. First place I remember seeing it was Shawn Waltman, who was then known as 123 Kid and later x doing it over in the UK. Then all of a sudden we were doing it as a group to each other, kind of thing, and it was funny. It was sort of a witty way to tell somebody where they could go or they didn't like your answer to something, a bunch of buddies ripping each other. From a television standpoint, as we started to do it, DX, it just felt kind of natural. It's a lot of things that we did on TV as DX were things we were doing as friends. We on the scenes long before we ever brought a TV. It just got to be so sophomoric and juvenile that it tapped into the inherent smartest in all of us that thinks a lot of stuff in their head, but never actually says it because they want to be 
cordial or professional or polite. We just started saying a lot of those things that went through our heads through authority figures and people started to relate to that. And I found it quite amusing. Oh, I thought when uh, they actually came up with the idea because somebody would actually want that to be done to them, a la Nathan. Actually, I will, uh, I will have, you know... Um, you do want it, to it, be cup chucked by Shawn Michaels. Wouldn't you? No. Okay, look. Um, so I actually, have a, I actually have a story about the D-Generation X crotch chop. Uh, I was, uh, it was about 11.30, 11.45 at night. Uh, and there was some guy that came in drunk and high off his butt and talked about wrestling. And then, uh, you know, he sees my shirt. It's a DX shirt. And he says, oh, this little guy is a DX fan. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like five and a half feet. This guy's like 6'2". So I just decide, well, screw it. I'm going to get screwed up. Crotch chop. And he just starts laughing and just like, just like completely breaks. And he's like, oh my God, I just got crotch chopped by this kid. Oh my God. Oh God. That's awesome. It's awesome. You're <laughs> awesome, man. And uh, I got out and I swear to God, I, I feel like that guy, I feel like just that guy's getting robbed or something like that. Like, but yeah, the crotch, the crotch chop basically got me out of what I perceived to be a bad situation. So thank you, Sean. Thank you, DX. So here's the question. Would you dare uh, cross chop Shawn Michaels himself? If he wanted it? I would dare you to do that. You kidding me? Nathan would want a photo of them doing that together. Yeah, yeah. That I would do. But Nathan has to be dressed like Triple H for, for hilarious Actually, reasons. Nathan has to be dressed up like Triple H. You know, <laughs> oh, God. As well. Cool. Yeah, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I do it. I, 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 if it was the only way I could get a picture of doing a crotch chop with Shawn Michaels, I would do it. <laughs> so that's it. We've got to get me. Uh, right, so we need to get Triple H hair. We need to get Triple H moustache. Uh, don't forget the uh, fake pecs as well, because we know they're fake. Uh, the Triple H p- uh, pants, the Triple H boots. And uh, maybe if you have a bit of blood coming out of his leg, maybe that will do it. Well, if it, if it's the only way, I will do it. But it's I I will do it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I will do it. I've only ever seen DX live once, and seeing like the theme kick in and people going nuts in the arena is amazing. It was back when Toronto. When D-Generation X took on the legacy and they ended up busting the camera. Hmm. Uh, then at the end of the night, they, them, John Cena, and Batista all beat up Orton in the ring. Hmm. So I haven't seen DX live. I have seen Triple H live. I think I've seen Shawn Michaels. No, I haven't seen... Yeah, I have seen Shawn Michaels live, I think. So I haven't missed that, but the only thing I've got to say is I've, I've been there. I've been on a beer money... Uh, at the beer money stage where everyone shouts beer and then money. That for me is my DX moment. You gotta do it now, dude. Yeah, but I need the I need the tuning up the band from uh, James Storm though, that's the problem. Nathan, you can improvise right here, right now, James Storm. <laughs> all right, all right. We're appointment DX! Yeah, we're appointment DX! We like beer and money. Beer, money, beer, money. We'll never be as good as DX. And our fans are crazy Brits who like Adam Sandler. Again, stop fantasizing about him. We know he's your dream person. Well, see, here's the thing. You were the one who brought him up first on this podcast, Dean. Yeah, but you're the one who's brought him up now. We'll see. You're the one who brought him up first. He's yours. You brought him up now. You brought him up first. Now. First. Now. First. Now. First. Now. 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 Voiced. Children. Yeah, Fraser. Don't you have more news? Or yeah, no. That's all the news. I was just letting you have your bonding time because I know how good a dean's going to be when you're off with your affair off the stage. So. At least I'll be able to talk on one of my own podcasts. You can still talk on one of your own podcasts. Oh, really? Why couldn't I get a word in Edgeways last week? Well, that's because 
you were the one who kept on muting my microphone for like three weeks. You were the one who was telling porky pies. I wasn't on on porky lies. There's only two cakes I fancy. That's Beckinsale and Upton. Oh my God. Who is Kate Lupton? I said Kate Upton. Well, it's not the way I heard it. Yeah, but you hear things a lot of way. You think Shawn Michaels is better than Taker. That's how we... He is. Don't even get me started, only man. By your, only by your own demented... Uh, I will... Uh, interpretation. Uh, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. What is The Undertaker doing for professional wrestling right now? Uh, retiring. And who is overseeing the greatest creative renaissance that the WWE has had since he was an active wrestler? Yeah, but you must remember one thing. Taker was still actually on the active roster list until recently. Sean, I'm so, how long? Sean, I'm, I'm just long? saying, well, even, well, even when he was retired, he was a part of the best pay-per-view. You're wrong. God, no. It wasn't right, how long has he been retired then, Mr. know it all He's been retired since WrestleMania 26, which has been 12 years. He came back for Crown Jewel 2018, oh. so I don't know. We don't talk I, about. I don't, I don't see. And again, this is this is another thing. Like, this is, why I'm, this is why I'm excited. Shawn Michaels was oh, great in that match. That match itself was a train wreck because oh, the person that was supposed to be calling it Triple H... Taurus Peck. He couldn't be like Cody Rhodes. Um, the millions of dollars worth of talent and yeah. Cody Rhodes, nobody really wants. Yeah. And then what do The Undertaker and Kane do? Like, honestly, th- honestly, this comes down to Taker at this point because, you know, he's the ring general. He is uh, the person who's been doing it, you know, frequently. What does he do? He looks to Sean. What does Kane do? He looks to Sean. That shows you beyond a shadow of a doubt how good Sean is, that The Undertaker had to cower and be afraid when Triple H goes down, that he looks to the one person who can put on a good match, who has been gone for eight years at this point, Sean. And Sean having to throw together an epic on the fly where he decides to take a moonsault off of a ladder. Sean doesn't have to do that. Sean doesn't have to do that. What? Do what? The moon salt. The moon salt off the ladder onto Undertaker and Kane to the outside of the ring. I love it how nobody really talks about that match, but yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. I don't give two shits, buddy. Oh, you're you're, br- you're bringing oh, you're bringing up the you're the, saying that the Undertaker's better than Shawn Michaels. Yes. Where was he? Where was he? When they needed him the most. He oh, wow. was looking oh, to Sean, cowering well. like a the child. Only cares about that match is you. Nobody else cares. And then we also have such classics like Nobody's... The Undertaker versus Bill Goldberg. Oh, you mean uh, when Goldberg gave himself concussion and how is that Taker's fault? Well, Taker should have been able to carry him better. I mean, I mean, oh, really, I like really, really, it's a ta- it's a tag team match. Somebody goes down. The only person that's willing to put the burden on themselves in Crown Jewel 2018, for as bad as it is, is Sean. He is so the only one, one willing. Else. He is the he is the only one willing. Not to mention, who has got more PWI five star matches than anyone? Sean Michaels, Kenny Omega, Sean PWI. No, oh, isn't it? Oh, hold on. Which one is it that Kenny Omega has seven star matches? Oh, that's that's Dave Meltzer. Oh well, that will be Dave Meltzer then. That's, yeah, that's that's Dave Meltzer, and uh, basically what happened was Kenny took him out for waffles, and uh, Dave gave him seven stars because the waffles were just that good. Uh, were the uh, were the waffles covered in some sort of sauce? I'll have you know, I made a special sauce, and you're allowed to say that we can't serve that. <laughs> we have integrity at the Waffle House. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, Fraser, move it on. Oh, say, I have our you say, you, say you have a host with the most. You're not really dealing as the most. You're but I'm going to miss yeah, this. I'm going to miss this back and forth with you and Nathan and everything. So I got to let you have your moment. I thought Nathan was going to have his moment when he literally did nothing but mock Jess. 
So cool. our topic, because Nathan's going to take them all with him when he leaves, the best of the McMahons. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. How are we doing this? You tell us, oh, you're fa- we go over all our favorite McMahon moments, like, you know, DX cover them in crap. and You know what? Actually, I've got a story about that, if you don't I mind. I went came back and got absolutely hammered by Triple H. Quite literally, he hit me with a hammer. Um, and then Hunter betraying, uh, betraying Dwayne, and then literally uh, going after Dwayne again and again. Oh yeah, and there was a uh, Shane yeah. choke slam off the top rope by the Undertaker. Okay, so I I want to talk a little bit about that faded. Degeneration X urinal moment where I was covered with crap by a porta potty. Oh, Vince, don't people forget. say I look like Henry Cable after that? I doubt that. And so I, I would like I to remember, thank those people. I remember something, Vince, when you had your head shoved in Big Show's ass. Yeah, I really tossed a salad that night. Yeah, did you uh, did you enjoy your did you enjoy your facial of a different variety? Well, I mean, it was the number one ass I've been inside of, so yeah, naturally. Yeah, I'm gonna say because usually everyone's in your ass. You remember that time I made Trish Stratus bark like a jug? I try not to. <laughs> okay, so did I ever tell you the story of how that happened? Because originally it was going to be me barking like a dog, but then I couldn't get the sound quite right. It was always meow, meow, and oink, oink. But we knew I was, that. The, first, the first time people said that, they thought I might have early onset dementia. Uh, Vince, isn't there a uh, segment where you literally fell out of your chair backwards because you were just like coming more over yourself? Uh, it's time. The literal one or the figure of lunch? Both. Oh, the literal one. Yeah, I fell out of my chair because uh, women were dancing. And uh, I'd like to remind everyone that my court order says that sexual harassment is bad. Um, but, uh, yeah, I fell out of my seat then. Um, the next time I fell out of my seat was... Uh, Actually, WrestleMania 32, when my, when my son, Shane, jumped from a hell in a cell onto The Undertaker. Vince, I've got a question for you, because I've always wondered which one's better, Nikki or Brie. Uh, which one of the Bella Twins was better in bed? John Laurinaitis. <laughs> Anyone else? Hold on a minute, I'm thinking. Come on, uh, come on, this is your question time with Vince. All right, Trish and Lita. John Laurinaitis. Sable. Brock Lesnar. Uh, the Cat or Jerry Lawler? Uh, now that one, he got me. Okay. The Cat was better for a fling, and Lawler is just a more passionate lover all around. Which one? Hey. The Dudley boys. Mike. He was Lake the Hall. boss. Like, who? <laughs> it's obviously Layla. Who would want that crap head, Michelle? <laughs> Samoa Joe or AJ Styles? Oh, now that one you got me. I, um, AJ fell a bit flat for me, but. He also was the one that was always there, not getting himself injured and fired. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to say AJ. Mm. Rikishi or Kali? Oh, God. Both! You can't make me choose! i tell you what, actually, actually, that brings me a good question. Who has the biggest ass out of Kali and uh, Rikishi? Stephanie. <laughs> we never know. No, See, it's that. actually true. We had to measure. Actually, Hunter, you can ask me this. What size uh, bra does Stephanie take? 
Excuse me a sec. Vince? <laughs> what 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 is this word bra? It's a thing that women are supposed to wear. But she never she never So what do you reckon? Gotcha. Okay, so if Stephanie wears uh, a size 11 high-heeled boot uh, Uh on each of the girls, uh, spiking out uh, so that uh, nobody questions how wonderful they are. uh. And then you have Chris Jericho. Yes, you're not. Oh, speaking, speaking of Jericho, did you ever go to uh, Stephanie after the ECW WCW invasion and go and basically sing "Let the Boobies Hit the Floor"? I I tried, and uh, she said to me, "Hunter, you'll never be able to do it as good as Chris. He's better than you. Stop." Uh, and that um, is why Chris Jericho is not WWE to this day. Hmm. Uh, Vince McMahon versus God. <laughs> oh, oh, that's easy. It's always me, baby. Vince, Tyler Breeze or Fandango? You picked my 2014 crush of the year. Crap. Always knew this was going to be a hard one on the podcast. Um, I'm going to say Tyler Breeze because he made me money before, you know, the whole thing went down. Uh, Fandango, uh, that was more Jim Johnson than anything doing the da 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 So, yeah, yeah, Tyler Breeze. Sasha Banks or Bailey? <laughs> well, I know who Fraser's favorite one is. I, myself, I'm a, ba- I'm a Bailey man. I'm, uh, you know what? In honor of Michael Fraser, I'm going to leave Sasha to him. And also say Bailey. Mm. But to be fair, not not only that, but you actually can get to, I want to know who, I want to know if you'll be Maggio to Bailey as well. That what makes it even better. I remember, I don't know if you probably didn't see the pay-per-view because you were too busy doing whatever you do, Vince. But uh, Twiddling well, my thumbs, various yeah. farting and... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, but every time the Welsh crowd sang, "Hey Bailey, ooh, I want to know, I want to know who, oh, 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 if you be Margaret," we just kept singing it out, and uh, she was just like, "No, no, no." But can you imagine? We had to wait thirty years for a pay per view. We've had to wait even longer to do that. Uh, speak other minute. What English ones is the? Um... Oh, here's one: Ilya Dragunov, or or <coughs> what? Well, Oh, that's easy. Alexander Rusev. Hulk Hogan, so, Macho Man. Andre the Giant. Big Show or Big Boss Man? <laughs> Big Sexy. Kevin Nash or Scott Hall? Big Sexy. <laughs> Billy Gunn or Road Dog, or Road Dog Jesse James? <clears throat> Well, I don't really like people named Jesse when I'm moving in on my turf. So I'm going to go ahead and say Billy again. Porco Animal. Heidenreich. Oh, God. Matt or Jeff? Matt Morgan. Uh, Edge or Christian? <laughs> Are you crazy? No. Why would I like either of those? Uh, because one doesn't work for your company anymore, but the other one still does. Okay, that's right. That's right. Uh, I vote for the creepy little bastard. That's both. Because I also don't work for the company. Yeah, but Stone called Steve Austin called Christian a CLB. And I hated his face. All right. Dwayne Johnson or Steve Austin? Well, I know this is going to get some heat from a lot of people. But when does Mr. Man ever care about heat? Exactly, exactly. I'm going to say, uh, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin. All right, Dwayne Johnson talking smack on the mic or Dwayne Johnson talking smack in, sync, in, uh, in, in his songs? 
Oh, okay. I'm going to say Dwayne Johnson talking smack to the songs. But not for the reason you're thinking. Have you ever seen that uh, Dwayne Johnson versus Jimmy Fallon lip sync battle of Shake It Off by oh, Taylor yeah. Swift? Yeah. Because the player's going to play, 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 play. And the haters going to hate, 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 hate. Although, let it be known that I did actually like a uh, rock song when he, came, when he was in Sacramento, when he said, uh, what was it? I can't remember what the beginning of it was. The end bit will be when the Lakers beat the Kings in May. That was absolutely the worst thing he could have said. And it just sounded so funny. Little liars and the cheat, the sick, sick losers of this world. You could have been getting down to this sick beat. Please my do. ex best guy's new girlfriend. She's like, oh my God, I haven't got a shake. So the fellas over there with a hell of good hair singing an autumn rhythm with a shake, shake, shake. Uh, Fraser, I think Vince McMahon's going to have to cover every single Taylor Swift song now he's done that. Probably didn't she have to re record like all her songs? Yeah, that was another matter entirely. But yeah, I think Vince McMahon should. Uh, Cover majority of Taylor Swift song. I'm just thinking about. Marry what, me, oh. Julia. You'll never ever be alone. I oh, love oh, 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 you. Vince, Vince, you have to change it. Remember, you know, marry me, Fraser. Oh, sorry. sorry. No. All right. Marry oh, me, yeah. Fraser Boo. You'll never ever be alone. I love you, and that's all you need to know. I talk to your dad. Go pick out a white dress. It's a love story. Baby, just say, Sweetie Boo. Hey, hey, hey. Do, do, do. Hey, hey, hey. Because you were definitely young when he first saw you. I sure was. I was in my 60s. And then Fraser can sing back with, look what you made me do when he bars you from the podcast. He was the one who invited me here. And Vince can just stand back. (laughs) Oh, Fraser, Fraser, why do you always have to go back to that? Can't you use a little imagination for once? Well, then he's got no chance. You know, the people coming across the way. Yeah. <laughs> we know Vince is mad. That's me. But I am the only one. <laughs> Hope someday everybody can see it. But the way it was me. Seriously, you got any other questions or do we need to go on to our very next special guest? Selena Gomez or Taylor Swift, which songs would you rather sing to Fraser on your honeymoon night? Uh, okay, so Round and Round by Selena Gomez is always number one. And then, uh, let me see. Don't forget, I want you to know as well, because you want Fraser to know just how much you love him. Yeah, the, that's that's number five on my list. You, you actually just described like three quarters of my set list. Um, mm-hmm. The other one is Rock With You by Michael Jackson. And uh, I've actually, I've I've recorded a, a, a demo of that if you're if you're interested. Yeah, I'm not surprised Fraser doesn't sing another Jackson song where he goes, make me want to scream. Yeah, no, I'm good. I like Thriller by him. That's about it. So, well, so hold on a minute. Who else is that? Um, actually, Vince McMahon prefers Clean Bandit because he loves playing the violin to rest- other wrestlers, doesn't he? That's true. I like getting my ass beat. But you also like, pl- like uh, playing the violin when you fire everybody, don't you? No. Yeah, you know when you say you're fired, they start crying. And you go, "Oh, I'm just playing the violins here for you. Let me go." It's the world's smallest violin. It would be in your hands. Yeah. Oh, and anyone who doesn't think that I don't have it, I just send it in the group chat. I just want everybody to know. Mm-hmm. Also, one of his favorite Selena Gomez songs. 
Uh, I tell you what, actually, you know what, Vince? That gives me an idea. Can we have a duet between you and Fraser doing the uh, Rewrite the Stars from uh, Greatest Showman? I would be down if you could get my sweeper to sing. I haven't seen that, so... No, 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 no. Fraser, you don't need to have seen it. The song has been, like, everywhere. You know, Zac Efron sang it, Zendaya sang it. But the question is, who's going to be the Zac Efron and who's going to be the Zendaya? Given the fact that Vince McMahon is uh, built like a horse, I recommend him be Zac. And since you are quite the Slim Jim, I recommend you doing Zendaya's. No, I'm good. Technically, actually, do you know what? This I'm on board. Quite, actually, because the first words out of Fraser's mouth would be, you think it's easy. Oh, oh yeah, it's very easy. It's very easy being Vince McMahon's uh, Vince McMahon's number two. Mainly because yeah. you mainly have to do a lot of number ones for him. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> you have any more questions for me, or do I need to bring in the very next special guest? Now, which of the Kardashians is your favorite, and which one would you like to fall off your chair to? Kanye West and Kanye West. Even though Kanye West isn't really part of the family anymore. Oh, he is in my world, Dean. He would be in yours. Uh, Gigi or Bella Hadid? Oh. Uh, they're the both in the age range you go for, Vince. I know. That's, you're going to have to leave me with that one. Mm, it is a tough choice. They are. I think I'm going to have to go slide it to Gigi. Okay, we, okay Gigi. Anything else, or do I bring in the next special guest? Uh, bring in the next special guest. Yes, please bring in the next special guest. I've I've actually forgotten people. Man, oh, bro, there man, is I... one more. There is one more. What? The ultimate test. Uh, the producer or Mrs. Fraser, the true head of the table. Uh, Michael Fraser. <laughs> I think well, that's quite obvious. Uh, I think that, I think that's quite obvious. I'm going to date once. You know what he did? He fished out a half-eaten sandwich and already burned out candles out of the trash can outside the Harvey's. Here's a question. Has Vince McMahon ever cooked a meal in his life? Hell no! Oh, that'd be why he burnt it then, Fraser. Uh, Man, bro, my name's Vince Russo, bro. Oh, God, piss off. Man, let's not, not, bro. You got some questions for me, bro? Yeah, why did you send WCW into bankruptcy? Because uh, I thought it was fun, bro. Man, uh, I was still working for WWE at the time, bro. And, and the thing that you have to realize about WWE, bro, is that, bro, uh, it's a brotherhood, bro. And, uh, you know, I, w- I was sitting around with Vince McMahon, bro. And we was like, yeah, no, I, d- I think you could bankrupt WCW in like three years, bro. And he said, screw that. I'll do it in two, bro. Oh, do we have to have this guest or can we have another one? It, it was the best four dollars I ever spent in my life, bro. Uh, my name's Kenny No Balls. That's better. I, I'm, you know, I'm here to more. answer all your questions. Okay, As a special well, goodbye to the podcast for a little while. All right, then. How drunk were you when you came up with the idea to win three world titles in separate companies? Well, as everyone knows, I suck. I'm a huge hack job, right? Everybody knows yeah. that. All yeah, right. All right. So, man, I, I got I got to say, um, you ever hear that song by the uh, great wrestler turned artist, top selling artist, Kurt Angle saying, I don't suck? Mm-hmm. And I worked out to that song for like 12 years. And that's when I thought to myself, when I get into the ring and people tell me that I suck, whether it be my opponents, the people in the back, Yolanda, me, I, I thought to myself, what will make sure that I don't that I don't suck? You know, like the song said. And so that's when I won my first world championship by crying and begging and uh, you know, uh basically doing some things that I don't want to repeat here on this podcast. I know you had Vince and Candy McMahon, but I, I understand. That my only fan, Michael Fraser, wants to keep a family friendly. But 
<clears throat> after I won my first one, people then say I still suck. So I won. So you know, I I done went and begged for more and more and more. And I mean, you know, I went into the Waffle House with my three title belts, and Yolanda done said to me that no matter how many belts I win, I still suck. And one thing led to another, and well, that's the whole story, really. Any other questions? How badly does Kenny Omega suck? Oh, God. Okay, you... you. I was going through my experimental phase in 06. And I grew up the worst mustache and the worst goatee ever. I thought it would never get over it, but, you know, apparently just look at him. Eh, it's true. Man, I can't even think of my own look. All right. Oh, actually, now I'm, I'm glad to just said that, because I do have a question for him. Yeah, hey, what do you need, uh? Why is Paige in AEW? We couldn't medically clear her, and uh, unfortunately, she still wanted to wrestle. uh, And, uh, you know, you'd think we would learn from the first time, but apparently not. uh. Yeah, well, I miss her already. When's Kyrie Zane coming back? As soon as I can get her. I've tried calling her 63 times. And what about Zelina Vega? (laughs) <laughs> oh, I know why you want her back. <laughs> oh yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, oh God. Uh, I don't know, but the fact that Malachi Black is now out of his contract is uh, very <laughs> interesting to me. Yeah, <laughs> because now you know I hold all the cards. I can say to him, "Hey, you know, I'll give you a check. Ta- I'll give you a title, or I'll give you a contract." If I can give your wife one too. Actually, I think that phrase should be if I, as in, you know, your fierce, loyal British vice president can give Well, no, one. I, uh, so here's what I'm thinking, and just hear me out on this, okay? okay. You know, we still have NXT UK. We do. You know, if Malachi Black agrees, I didn't actually say which title I was going to give to his wife. Uh, Mm-hmm. That's true. That is also true. I, you know, I put her in NXT UK. Yeah. You know, she wins the belt mm-hmm. and she defends it exclusively in the UK. Countries upon countries away. Eventually, she's going to get homesick and look for a place to stay in. Nah. Mm-hmm. I see. Wait. I see. And, that, and that's where the British head of talent relations is going to come in, sweep her off her feet, and, you know, do your thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a reason you're the boss, man. See? Mm. Who knows? She could actually prove to be a boss. <laughs> like, you sent Mandy Rose to NXT, and look where she, look how well she's been doing. Oh, yeah, Toxic Attraction has been nailing it out of the park. Go on, when's Toxic Attraction coming to the main roster? See, here's the thing. Sean and I have been playing rock, paper, scissors for the longest time. Of course, Sean always wins because I pick rock. Of course you would. And so if you're Shawn Michaels, do you really want to lose that tag team? Mm, so yeah, so don't. basically basically what I'm saying is Toxic Attraction will come to Monday Night Raw or Friday Night SmackDown the instant that I can beat Shawn at Rock, Paper, Scissors. Don't bear in, do bear in mind you have to make Mandy Rose lose the NXT title before she officially goes. Hey, we play rock, paper, scissors once a month. There's plenty of time to do that. Uh... Mm. Oh, I do have another question, Hunter. Okay. Uh, how, how well do you and Dwayne truly get on? Out- <laughs> out- oh, out- man. We're like old buddies. You know, Whenever he comes back to the WWE, he says, where's Vince? And then, you know, lately I've been saying, well, I'm Vince now. And then he leaves. Uh, so I would say, like, really good old buddies. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, Fraser, I'm out. It's all yours. <laughs> ah, Fraser. 
Oh no, Kenny! Why? Why, oh. Kenny? Oh, that's easy. Because Christian Cage was better than me. <laughs> why, Kenny? Oz for months. I got to and then that ha- and then that Hangman Page was better than me. Do anyone better than Kenny? And then that Brian Danielson was better than me. And then that Tony Siobhan was better than me. And then that kid, Matt from accounting, was better than me. (laughs) And then Haruka was better than me. Anyway, man, I'm I'm here. I'm waiting for your questions. Kenny, how much do you love Michael Fraser? Oh, man, I love Michael Fraser like I love the blueberries on my waffle. Do you love Michael Fraser as much as he loves you? Probably not, man. Nah, we both know he loves his wife more. It hurts me. It does. But I'm unsure. I feel for him, I really do. Well, it's up to you, Fraser. Do you love me or do you love your wife? Can you make Jesse? Can he just 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 I'm sorry? I love how he's contemplating this. I (laughs) (laughs) You should always answer your wife first. Yes, it's always just. Isn't that right, Jess? Well, the, yeah. So why did you couple? Why did you contemplate saying, why it? Why did you take so long to? Why did you take so up? long? Like normally, whenever we ask you stuff like this, it's instant. It is. Why did it take you so long just to say your wife for this reaction? Timing. Yeah, he yeah says, sure it is. Yeah, sure it was. Don't worry, Fraser man. You still got all my matches, my point seven star matches. That I do. That I do. Oh, this work. Yeah. Man, anybody else got any questions for me? Can and no balls? I think we're good, Kenny. <laughs> All right, my name is uh, the Red Rushing. <laughs> do you Nicholas. have any questions for the Red Rushing? What is your opinion on Vladimir Kozlov? Oh. oh, that's an interesting one. Okay, so so Sanchika made him a better wrestler. That's what I will say. Um, but uh, in terms of being, you know, a big brute, I think we both know the red wrestler would destroy anyone, man. I got another question. Uh, put yourself in Triple H's shoes when he had to face uh, Gene Snitsky. And whereas Triple H said, can someone seriously, seriously, can someone get this guy too fresh? What would you say? You will respect my authority. And then I would kick him in the balls. I would not even have to worry about dental work. Kyle. What? Kyle. Where? Your opinion on your favorite wrestler. Oh, oh, Kyle, Kyle. Kyle is the worst wrestler in the history of the world. He should quit right now while he's ahead. Otherwise, the Red Russian will go and give him a motor for holding. And what about Stan? Stan the man. Oh, Mm -hmm. Stan the man's going down. The Red Russian's going to take him right to Moscow. I'll drive him right to Putin. All right, what about the uh, the South Park version of Kenny No Walls? <laughs> that Kenny? That Kenny drives on his chair! And you had to do anything. Damn it. <laughs> what about Tama? Tama, Tama, Tama. You mean Tama? Tama! Um, okay, so, 
Uh, Dr. Timothy, uh, obviously, I can't beat him. I've got my... I've got my... I've got my limits as to my talent. Okay, I do not want Timmy... I'm uh, sorry, that's Timmy... to come after me, the Red Russian. I will put all my nuclear bombs away. What about Wendy Testerberger? Boo! Boo! Oh, Boo, wasn't Wendy Testerberger, boo! Wasn't there a song you sang about her when uh, you realised Stan had a crush? I believe it went something like Stan wants to kiss Wendy Testerberger, but done in common style. Stan wants to kiss Wendy Testerberger. No, I believe it went Stan wants to kiss. Wendy Testaburger. And then he replied, nah, nah, nah. Shut up, Faraz, I do not. Nah, 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 nah. Don't want to kiss Wendy Testaburger. <laughs> Shut up, Faraz, I do not. Oh, yeah, like Dean Cannon doesn't want to kiss Kate Bosworth. Like Nathan doesn't want to kiss Shawn, McMa- Shawn Michaels' ass. Who the hell is Shawn McMahon? Oh, sorry, he's the offspring I made up of uh, Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon. He's actually the son that uh, sh- that uh, Vince actually wishes he could have. Damn right I do! Shane was such a disappointment! But Shawn McMahon, can you imagine it? All the talent of Shawn Michaels, all the wrestling acumen of Shawn Michaels, and the business sense of me. We would never need The Undertaker. I'm so going to be glad when he goes away for three months because then I don't have to listen to another Oh, Shawn Michaels is way better than Undertaker. So I got a question. When I get back... Shawn I, Michaels will be will, will be barred or any talk of Shawn Michaels will be barred from this particular podcast. Oh, so I can still do it in Final Fantasy. As, co- as uh, co-creators, we have the influence to do that. What about if I talk about Shawn Michaels? Uh, oh, no, because then we just know it'll be a love story. What about if I talk about Shawn Michaels? Yeah, if we if you talk about Shawn Michaels, something will get uh, something that will get a bit bigger is really not something we really want to think about. What about if I talk about Shawn Michaels? Uh, then we're just realizing we're talking to Kenny Omega. Man, I'm Kenny No Balls. I do not do very good, none done. Technically, you are Kenny Noble, so yeah, you are technically Kenny Noble. Just think, phrase. What are we going to do without him for three months? Well, technically, two months and a, and a week in my case because I'm away for three weeks in November. So, yeah, so <coughs> I'll be here when I can. Right. But... So, so he when he's not here next week. Shall we just literally rip Shawn Michaels apart? Uh, no, Dean. I'm Michael Fraser, and I have integrity. We shouldn't do that. As a matter of fact, just for saying that, I think we should rip apart The Undertaker. Oh, my jolly, yes. Nobody's going to rip apart The Taker. Although me and Fraser... Could, oh, no, wait. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Michael Fraser, and I absolutely dislike One More Day, even though it made $2 billion in the previous year. And I think it was two point nine billion. Yeah, that may be, but it's still not any good because what more day is the worst comic in the history of worst comics. Man, Michael, why don't you why don't you think that you can insult my favorite comic, man? I thought we was friends, man. But Dean Conley will fight to the very end that Hubie Halloween is the greatest thing oh in the Oh my god. Yeah, 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 right, Dean. So we've got the, so we've got one person who's fascinated with Kate Bosworth and the other one who really wants to be married to Adam Sandler. Wow. And they're both so wrapped up the, in the same Brit from Jersey. How about <laughs> from Jersey, mate? We've been over this. We've talked about how you do it every tonight. Yes, we've also talked about the fact that Nathan seems to think I sound like a posh twat. 
that's how your impression started when we first met you when you were yeah, transitioning over. No, no way, shape, or form, over. am I posh? In no yeah, way, I'll... shape, or form, am I posh? A posh. Poosh. 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 Right. Right. But you want to know who is posh. Very posh. My Gene Connolly's absolute love, the producer. Whom I will be, who I will miss terribly, for I, Dean, will be lost without her. And her love of Kate Bosworth, which is then my love of Kate Bosworth. Uh, (laughs) She has many loves. Not one of them is for Kate Bosworth. Well, there's Scott Eastwood. Oh, yes, there is. I do do love him. Uh, um, Ryan Tedder, Daniel O'Donoghue. Yeah. Let me just uh, let me say something. When everybody everybody mm. thinks of an Eastwood, they don't necessarily think of Scott. They think of Clint. Right, and uh, you and I both agree that they should think of Scott, though. I'm Dean Connolly. And I approve well, this message. If, if you're going to prove, Elta, if you think you're me, then which out of the Eastwood sisters out of Francesca and Morgan would I actually date and marry? Um, both of, You would date both of them because you'd never rush into marriage. Mm. And they both look near. I don't, exactly, I don't exactly marry somebody on the first date. Let's put it that way. No, you would date both of them. Honestly, I would happily take Morgan. Right now, <clears throat> but no, honestly, uh, guys, thank you so much. Uh, it's been fun. Um, I will be here when I can. Keep the podcast warm. <laughs> And uh, remember, uh, guys, <laughs> thank no, you guys. Kenny, so- you can't leave the podcast. <laughs> Seriously, thank you guys so much um, for allowing me into your homes uh, week after week after week. Um, I will be, I will be back. Um, when I am able. In the meantime, you got Dean and Fraser. They're oh. going to be keeping the podcast warm for you. Uh, and I, as co-host and co-founder, I refuse you to. I refuse to let you go. <laughs> what are you going to do when I don't show up? Well, I always did say about firing. Yeah, I'll just find a voice actor who's even better than you are. There are tons of them out there. There are tons of them out there. But they are new. one Nathan Tass. But so, uh, but honestly, guys, thank you so much. Um, it's go- It's been a fun ride. Uh, I need to get off to cross some things off of my bucket list. I'll be back on certain weeks when I can be, but for the next three months, you're stuck with these guys. By the way, has everyone noticed how he said uh, it's been a ride? Usually, somebody says that when this is when this is literally goodbye. It is goodbye for a while. I prefer to think of the terms, we will see you again. Smell you later, dudes. Just one more thing before you go, um, since everybody's not really going to see you over the next three months. Maybe you should tell them how to get in touch with you during those three months. Oh, I mean, I, I've I've done it on just about every podcast up to this point. I, I really yeah, but you always have a new viewer who has no idea <laughs> I really want to leave on the whole smell you later, dudes. Uh, but you can find me on www.deathpixie.ca if you want to talk to me about voiceover opportunities or commission me for some of your own. www.deathpixie.ca is the best way to get a hold of me. Now, can I say smell you later, dudes? How about stink you later, dudes? Fine. Smell you later, dudes! Mm, alas. Hold on, Fraser. I'm thinking next week, do we have a party or do we just slope around the place knowing that he's not here? We make it like a funeral. Technically, I could call in a favor from Eddie Edwards because he did always say that if we needed somebody for our a spare host for our podcast, we could take him up on it. You should Maybe. Do it. You should have a topic of the fall with Shawn Michaels, you know? Or... No, that is a terrible uh, topic. Uh, sorry, you should going. feel bad. Hold on a minute. Hold feel on. bad. I would like to see you mute me, you. Yes. I'd like to see you mute me now. I'd like to see oh, wait, you I'm mute me mute now. You for the next three weeks. I'm going to miss this. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, just one more thing. I need to mail the producer something. In fact, oh, here we go. Uh, producer. 
get Sean. Oh, hold on. I can't even spell his name right. <laughs> can't even get. Sh- get, get, sh- get, get, get SD Howen? Who the hell is that? <laughs> get Sean Michaels on in the next three months when Nathan isn't here. I think that's fair phrase. Yeah. <clears throat> Hold on a minute. We'll see Nathan wrap up like his performance and everything, and he's just sprinting out the door in full costume trying to get home. Um yeah. The you know, Sh- Shawn Michaels is an exception to the rule. I I, I, w- I would move heaven and earth. Just um, wonder, who else can we? Ha- who else should we have on that he doesn't like? Uh, technically, he's not a big fan of Cobra Kai, so we could have somebody from Cobra Kai on. Hey, we could even have a watch party, Fraser. Yeah, Cobra Kai watch party. Yeah, we can. We can do that. Yeah, but the degenerates are run the asylum. Yeah, do you, I, do myself you guys... would, I myself would prefer a Hellraiser watch party, just so every just so the director and Jamie Clayton can. Uh, Talk me through how they decided to film everything. Actually, do you know what? I might see that the producer can get uh, Mackenzie Gray back while Nathan's away. Oh, that, you jerks. That's a jerk move. You jerks. No, a jerk move would be Shawn Michaels. No, that would be a dick move. There you go. Besides, you love Mac. If he I says do- where you are, I'll just <laughs> say he's hoping, to, he's hoping to be the next you because he's gone into theatre. So, but would, in, a, in any FYI, case, FYI, I would say to him, he's not pulling the Bill Shatner, by the way. No. <laughs> but anyway, this is the wrong podcast for this. Uh, but honestly, thank you guys so much for inviting us into your homes uh, each and every week. Uh, these two are still going to be with you uh, next week. And I'm just going to say what I always say. Keep the podcast warm and smell you later, dudes. With that, you can find me on Final Cut Official on Instagram. Uh, I I don't use my Twitter anymore because I've been locked out of it. Uh, I have, I did mean to say this on the Derek Scott podcast. Uh, I actually have our own YouTube channel now. Um, it's called Derek, uh, Final Cut Presents Directors. No, it's, I can't remember what it is. I'm sure it's Final Cut Directors Cut Podcast or something like that. You'll know when you see it anyway. Um I'm not quite sure when we're going when we're going on YouTube, but I think we should. Uh, actually, who would like to actually see us on YouTube? If you're streaming or downloading this, do let us know at either Final Cut Official, either of Nathan's or or Mister Fraser's uh, socials, which is Five Star Wildcard. I believe it's on Twitter or Beautiful Michael on Instagram. Into dog. Mm. tomato tomato. And you can find me at the Body Spencer Truck Hicks Facebook page. You can find me at the Go Kai Studios Facebook page. And if you want to check out some of what we've been doing, you can check out the Go Kai Studios Instagram and Facebook again. And we have amazing things starting tomorrow for Go Kai Studios as we count down to the release of the first issue of Paranormal Patrollers. Woohoo! It's took long enough. Yep. It's even longer than an Avatar movie. Yeah, so we've been putting a lot of work in and expanding the world and everything. So we've been taking this time to really hone what we can so uh just one last one yeah. last word nathan is still here and i'm actually glad he's muted himself because i do want him to hear this um one short mo- one short uh, week has become a month has become a year to the point of i generally don't know where these three months will take us without the moniker of our of our podcast because he just holds it together. He just introduces that bit of comedy that we never had. But the only thing is, Nathan, if you're going to be the moniker of the group, please no excessive cleaning, no being bossy. And uh, definitely, we are your best friends, regardless of whether Fraser's is married or not. We're still your best friends. And he is ours, so... Yeah, we're going to miss him so much. I'm going to miss him so much because... But I am definitely not going to miss him muting me at every single opportunity just so he can have his say about Shawn Michaels. Okay, fine, since you guys brought it up. I'm going to miss you guys. 
Uh, but I will say, who is the greatest wrestler of all time, everybody? Just just Not hear just hear it out. Just hear it out. That's been commonly grouped oh among the three of us. Who is it? The showstopper, the headliner, the main event, the icon, Mr. WrestleMania, the heartbreak kid, and Mr. Hall of Fame, and Mr. NXT, Shawn Michaels. Smell you later, dudes. If that's about the third time you said that. Are you actually gonna say smoke are you actually gonna smell you later, dudes, or are you just gonna keep on saying it? This is probably on the podcast. <laughs> I don't look at me. I can't stop it. I'm not hosting.